Hello and welcome. My name is Jeannie Hertzler and together with my colleague Marianne Dudek, we are contributing educational consultants to Patton's NTSS initiative. During this quick pick, we will be sharing information about evidence-based writing practices for students in grades K through 12. The mission of the Pennsylvania Training and Technical Assistance Network is to support the efforts and initiatives of the Bureau of Special Education and to build the capacity of local educational agencies to serve students who receive special education services. Our goal for each child is to ensure IEP teams begin with the general education setting with the use of supplementary aids and services before considering a more restrictive environment. During today's session, our intentions are to enhance your understanding of Pennsylvania's NTSS framework, review highlights of the empirical writing research, make explicit connections between writing research and practice, and leave you with a high quality resource to enhance your implementation efforts. Pennsylvania's multi-tiered system of support is a standards aligned comprehensive school improvement framework for enhancing both academic and behavioral health outcomes for all students. In Pennsylvania, Response to Intervention, or RTI, refers to the methodology that is used to determine how slow is slow and how low is low as an alternative to ability achievement discrepancy within the specific learning disability determination process. Pennsylvania's MTSS model represents an integrated system meaning that cross-disciplinary teams use a problem-solving process to facilitate shared ownership for achieving academic and behavioral goals using a continuum of evidence-based practices and reliable and valid data sources. The academic side of MTSS, standards aligned, high quality core literacy, mathematics, and STEM instruction is delivered within the context of culturally responsive practices positive behavioral supports, and family engagement. There are key components that form the foundation of PA's MTSS framework. If well, a well-articulated, well-designed, tiered system is in place, schools should realize efficient, effective, and sustainable outcomes. The Institute of Educational Sciences, or IES, publishes practice guides in education to bring the best available evidence and expertise to bear on current challenges in education. Authors of practice guides combine their expertise with the findings of rigorous research, when available, to develop specific recommendations for addressing these challenges. The authors rate the strength of the empirical evidence with practices that are being implemented in the field. We will be referencing recommendations from the IES reports that pertain to effective writing practices in grades K through 12. Let's start with recommended elementary practices. Please take a moment to review the IES elementary writing recommendations. The first IES recommendation for elementary students is to allot daily time for writing. Providing adequate time to write is one essential element of an effective writing instructional program. Students need dedicated instructional time to learn the skills and strategies to become an effective writer and time to practice what they learn. Beginning in first grade, it is recommended that practitioners devote at least one hour to writing 
to include 30 minutes of writing strategies, techniques, and skills, and 30 minutes for students to apply those skills. We have provided an example here for your reference. You'll notice in the first grade example that on the left, 30 minutes are reserved for the explicit teaching part. So the teacher models writing a complete statement and or sentence using several examples. Then the students will work in a small table group to sort complete and incomplete sentences that the teacher has prepared on sentence strips. And together those two things would take about 30 minutes. On the right you'll see how students will later apply what they've learned earlier. In language arts, the students will practice writing one complete sentence with a partner, and then later that day in social studies, students would write two complete sentences with a partner about the relevant topic. So you can see via our example that we can increase time for writing instruction by increasing the total amount of time devoted to language arts to ensure adequate writing time and also by setting aside a time for writing that is in addition to and distinctively separate from the designated reading block. If teachers set aside a separate block of time for writing, it's critical that they not neglect the integration of writing and reading opportunities in language arts. That is, writing instruction and practice must include deep engagement with text. Text students discuss, read and consider as they learn to express their own ideas and communicate effectively through their own writing. Elementary level instruction time should also focus on the foundational aspects or micro aspects of writing, including basic skills like spelling and handwriting. Instruction on the mechanics of writing should be integrated with instruction on higher level or macro associated skills. For example, a writing lesson might include an instructional warm-up with instruction focused on handwriting, spelling, or mechanics, which are the transcription skills, followed by instruction focused on composition and the writing process. Although st some students may learn how to write through an informal process approach to writing, the majority of students will require explicit writing instruction. We will give you a minute or two to read through this fourth grade example that embeds the process of writing and each step involved. So as you can see, writing well involves more than simply documenting ideas as they come to mind. It's a process that requires that the writer think carefully about the purpose for writing, plan what to say, plan how to say it, and understand what the reader needs to know. Teachers can help students become effective writers by teaching a variety of strategies for carrying out each component of the writing process and by supporting students in applying the strategies until they are able to do so independently. Over time, students will develop a repertoire of strategies for writing. Teachers should explain and model the fluid nature in which the components of the writing process work together so that students can learn how to apply strategies flexibly, separately, or in combination when they write. Writers compose for a variety of purposes that yield specific genres to include those shown here. You can see that there are listed the describe, narrate, 
inform, and persuade purposes. In teaching a particular genre, teachers should emphasize the purpose and relate it to a real world scenario. For example, the purpose of a persuasive letter is to convince the reader to agree with the writer. To achieve this purpose, writers should think of compelling reasons for readers who might not agree, then state reasons clearly and support them with appropriate evidence. In class, a real-world scenario of students writing a persuasive letter to convince their parents that a friend should be allowed to spend the night, or a letter to the principal asking for permission to go on a field trip would be great examples. Just as practice with foundational reading skills helps students become more proficient readers, practice with foundational writing skills helps students become more proficient writers. Difficulties with the acquisition of basic writing skills have a marked impact on the quality of ch a child's writing. Spelling skills can affect the words students choose because they may be less likely to use words they cannot spell. Students may also have a difficulty generating strong, interesting sentences that vary in length and complexity or convey their intended meaning when basic writing skills are not developed. As letter formation, spelling, and keyboarding skills become increasingly accurate and automatic, Students are then able to gradually free up their cognitive desk space and focus on developing more complex written communication skills. This is an example of how teachers across the elementary grades may robust up their spelling instruction, given that this is a common area of deficiency for many students. Please review the example or examples that are relevant for your grade level. Writing skills are also more likely to improve when students are motivated to write within a supportive writing environment. For example, it is strongly recommended that teachers participate as writers and communicate the importance of being able to write effectively. By taking part in writing activities, teachers convey that writing is important, valued, and intrinsically motivating. Student choice and the provision of ongoing feedback are essential to fostering community and a sense of self-efficacy as a writer. As indicated, students benefit from consistent opportunities to both give and receive feedback. The author's chair is a strategy that practitioners can adopt immediately to help move students' learning forward. Students take turns sitting in a special chair and reading their work aloud to their, peer, their peers. The classroom teacher models how to provide feedback and help the rest of the class do so. These are examples of sentence stems that students can adopt and use. Some of the stems are, I really like, or a standout line in your text for me is blank because blank, or I could really picture blank because. Let's move on to recommendations for secondary students. This guide provides secondary teachers in all disciplines and administrators with instructional recommendations that can be implemented in conjunction with existing standards or curricula. Teachers can use the guide when planning instruction to support the development of writing skills among students in grades 6 through 12. 
The recommendations allow teachers the flexibility to tailor instruction to meet the needs of their classrooms and students, including adapting the practices for use with students with disabilities, English learners, and or diverse learners. Before we get into the recommendations though, let's define effective writing. Page one of the IES, IES guide for grades six through 12 teachers outlines these indicators of effective writing. Effective writing achieves the writer's goals. It's appropriate for the intended audience and context. Effective writing presents ideas in a way that clearly communicates the writer's intended meaning and content. And it also elicits the intended response from the reader. Please take a moment to review the secondary recommendations. This recommendation suggests teaching writing strategies in two ways, through explicit or direct instruction and through a model practice reflect instructional cycle. It suggests explicitly teaching students different strategies for components of the writing process. Students learn how to select a strategy, how to execute each step of the strategy, and how to apply the strategy when writing for different audiences and purposes. For example, using a Venn diagram to plan a paper that compares and contrasts is a strategy. The strategy should be ta explicitly taught with the purpose for the strategy clearly explained. Practice opportunities should be afforded to students to use the new strategy. Additional examples of these explicit strategies are provided with great detail in the secondary IES document. In reference to the use of a model practice reflect instructional cycle, students observe a strategy in use, practice the strategy on their own, and evaluate their writing and use of the strategy. The steps of the recommendation are, First, the teacher models the strategy for the students. That would be considered the I do part of the cycle. Next, students are provided with opportunities to apply and practice modeled strategies. That's considered the we do part of the model. And finally, students engage in evaluating and reflecting upon their own and peers writing and their use of those modeled strategies. That becomes the you do piece of this instructional cycle. A model practice reflect approach allows students to observe the thinking and actions of a strong writer, attempt to emulate the features of effective writing, and then evaluate their writing according to those features. Teachers should employ a model practice reflect approach during writing instruction and classroom activities, gradually transitioning responsibility to students until they are using writing strategies independently. Combining reading and writing together in an activity or assignment helps students learn about important text features. For example, asking students to summarize a text they just read signals that well-written texts have a set of main points, that students should understand main points while they read, and that when students write certain types of compositions, they should focus on main points. In addition, reading exemplar texts familiarizes students with important features of writing, which they can then emulate. Formative assessment is necessary to help practitioners differentiate their instruction. Monitoring student progress through the writing process provides useful information for planning instruction and providing timely feedback to students. 
by regularly assessing student performance, not just students' final written products, teachers learn about student progress on key learning objectives and can tailor their writing instruction accordingly. Take a quick moment to review the formative assessment cycle featured here. These are examples of ways to conduct formal and informal formative writing assessment across the grades. The next slide features examples of secondary formative assessment methods. The last part of our quick pick will focus on how to incorporate the IES writing recommendations within a multi-tiered system of support. Remember that tiers within the tiered systems represent a continuum of evidence-based resources and supports for all students matched to need, including students with disabilities. Most of the resources that we have in schools are allocated toward Tier 1, where all students are afforded access to high-quality writing instruction. In order to assess whether Tier 1 is robust relative to the needs of your students, a given school might evaluate the following questions. Do we have assessments in place that tell us what percentage of students are responding to core writing instruction as evidenced by average to above average achievement or performance levels? Do all teachers receive professional development, assistance, and supportive accountability with respect to the implementation of high quality writing practices? Do we have common grade level goals for implementing evidence-based writing practices with reading practices across the content areas? And finally, how will we assess the fidelity of writing instruction at Tier 1? Tier 2 supports and services are often reserved for those students who are just starting to fall below benchmark in writing and who need additional small group opportunities that are an extension of core instruction. Some students get lost during the whole group instruction and simply need additional opportunities to refine and extend their understanding and receive feedback. Tier 2 is less intensive than Tier 3 and is intended to meet these kinds of needs. As indicated, Tier 2 is often extended core instruction and may be delivered by general education teachers within the confines of core ELA instruction using a preview teach approach. The teacher works with students who would benefit from small group instruction with a focus on previewing and teaching content and skills prior to the next day's whole group core instructional lesson, meaning that Tier 2 supports and services often do not warrant a separate block of intervention time. Teams might consider these questions. How might writing instruction be enhanced to meet the needs of struggling students? And which evidence-based writing practices and or methods will be used? For students who require the most intensive writing supports and services, it is important to analyze existing data and gather additional diagnostic information to inform the problem-solving process inherent to tiered systems and particularly within Tier 3. During Tier 3 problem-solving, it's customary for problem-solving teams comprised of practitioners with unique skill sets and training to answer questions such as, what are the student's strengths and deficiencies relative to their language skill development? And we think about that across the areas of reading, writing, speaking, and listening. 
What has been the student's response to instruction and intervention to date? And what methodologies have been used and why? Is there anything else we can do to intensify and align instruction and intervention across providers each day? And what do patterns in progress monitoring data indicate? What is the student's current versus targeted rate of improvement? So at this point, we would like to have you thinking about applying the IES recommendations and uh, applying that to your MTSS framework in your school. And to do that, we'd like to take a look at a case study student named Alex. So Alex is in the fourth grade with no IEP. Um, Alex's reading skills are relatively intact, but Alex's teacher is noticing some writing difficulty. Uh, Alex's teacher does note, however, that <clears throat> Alex has wonderful ideas to share verbally but struggles to put those ideas to paper in a coherent manner. And Alex is frequently misspelling words that makes reading the passages very difficult. Um, mastery of basic conventions of writing skills such as capitalization and punctuation are somewhat below Alex's peers and grade level expectations. Uh, the fourth grade teacher and the literacy coach reviewed the data from third grade, which is listed here at the bottom of the screen. We have a spring on-demand writing rubric scores, and each of these are out of four points. So two for focus, two for content, one for organization, two for style, and three for conventions. The end of the year in third grade spelling was C a C, the grade was a C, and the spring CBM words spelled correctly score was 16, which is below average. It's uh, below the 25th percentile rank. In anticipation of the mid-October meeting, Alex's teachers increased the frequency of progress monitoring to bi-weekly. They decided to do this because Alex's performance at the end of third grade was concerning and last year's teachers encouraged the current teachers to closely monitor Alex from the very beginning of the school year. The correct word sequences fourth grade spring benchmark is based on the 50th percentile rank offered by Grantwood Area Educational Agency. Notably, these data are consistent with other peer-reviewed studies and technical manuals like AIMSWeb. The fourth grade teacher and literacy coach do not initiate a tier two intervention at this stage. However, in preparation for a mid-October meeting, they agree to progress monitor Alex's correct word sequences on a bi-weekly basis. They then shared those data with the school counselor and school psychologist. This slide represents the data they collected. On the next slide, we're going to see this data graphed using ChartDog GraphMaker. These are Alex's baseline data for correct word sequences at the beginning of fall 2014. The spring fourth grade correct word sequences benchmark is based on the 50th percentile rank offered by that Grantwood Area Educational Agency. The dotted red trend line using ordinary least squares is superimposed over Alex's data. Notice the black phase change line at the very right of the graph. This is the point at which the tier three problem solving team meets to discuss Alex's progress and make instructional recommendations. Now we're going to take a look at how ChartDog helps us to identify the mean and trend line and baseline. It, uh, ChartDog automatically calculates the mean and trend line using ordinary least squares. So first I want you to look at Alex's mean during baseline. It's 11.75 correct word sequences. 
The national benchmark for fall fourth grade is 27 correct word sequences. 31 correct word sequences is the exact average or the 50th percentile rank at the fall benchmark period. Alex's performance is very much below the fall benchmark of 27. Now take a look at Alex's ROI during baseline. Notice the slope is a negative 0 0.02. This is the rate of improvement on in baseline per day. To calculate a weekly ROI, you simply multiply the slope by 7. So in Alex's case, the weekly ROI for correct word sequences is a negative 0.14 per week. So Alex is getting slightly worse and he is in need of an intervention. The RTI team convenes to discuss Alex's progress, review data from the cumulative folder, and begin discussion about a Tier 3 intervention for Alex. At that team meeting, the, the data on the left is presented and reviewed, and this is the same data that you saw on uh, the previous slide about the third grade achievement scores. In addition to the third grade scores, uh, additional data from the current fourth grade year are also shared. So you'll see that they share the uh, Alex's correct word sequences progress since the beginning of school. Uh, they share the fall on-demand writing rubric scores, which are fairly low. And the Woodcock-Johnson test of achievement, the spelling standard score of 85, which is the 16th percentile and writing sample standard score 81 which is the 10th percentile which are pretty low scores and so the team needs to find some intensive intervention strategies for Alex moving forward. So if we relate back to the IES elementary recommendations we'll notice that we can employ some strategies and interventions for Alex based on those recommendations. And so daily, Alex will receive explicit instruction in the power strategy with the classroom teacher. So that's a tier one strategy that can happen. The tier one strategy will also use step up to writing, which really focuses on those macro level composition skills for Alex. And in addition to that, Alex will be provided a micro level or transcription level intervention by a tiered provider. And in this case, they've chosen a program called Spellography. So the team implemented those interventions and administered bi-weekly probes scored for correct word sequences. Additionally, the fidelity of tiered intervention was checked by the principal and also by the literacy coach and teacher by way of self-report and peer observation. And sometimes the school counselor even helped to check with the fidelity of the intervention. These data are then graphed on the next slide. Notice that ChartDog allows you to create single subject design graphs typical of applied behavior analysis and special education purposes. Separate trend lines are calculated and graphed for each phase, both the baseline and the intervention phases. Here are Alex's averages or means during baseline and intervention. And now we look at his ROI during baseline and intervention. Remember that ChartDog calculates a daily ROI, so you must multiply that slope by seven days to get a weekly ROI. And with that, Alex's current weekly ROI for correct word sequences is 0.28 correct word sequences a week.
In mid-January, the fourth grade on-demand writing tasks are readministered. Alex's performance on that prompt is provided here. In addition, the school psychologist readministers the selected tests of the Woodcock Johnson, and this will facilitate a pre-post comparison. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of Alex's baseline and intervention performance across curriculum-based measurement, the on-demand rubric, and the Woodcock-Johnson performance. So let's ask some questions. How do we think Alex is doing? Do we need any other data? And assuming intervention fidelity was confirmed, what would you recommend next for Alex? These are all questions that teams would ask in the problem solving process, and we hope that through this case study you've sort of gotten a feeling of how that might look and feel for a team as they move through the process in trying to meet the needs of a particular student based on data. In order to write effectively, all students must develop and possess micro and macro level writing skills. Some students will need proportional emphasis in some of these skills more than others as we cultivate their strengths and clear up existing deficiencies. Therefore, it's important that practitioners who provide core and supplemental writing instruction and intervention have a deep understanding of the reading and writing process and the skills that need to be explicitly taught in order to help students become proficient and be able to assess whether these skills are intact using a range of technically adequate measures. Some students will exhibit difficulty with foundational writing skills or micro-level skills. Students with these defic deficiencies or difficulties often have problems spelling a word or forming a letter, which may cause them to forget their good writing ideas. Content may be lost if a student's writing or word processing is not, as, not fast enough to keep up with his or her thoughts. And finally, opportunities to conceptualize and refine ideas are comprised when students are not fluent with foundational level writing skills. Likewise, Students may also struggle with writing when macro-level writing skills are less well-developed. Writing is a complex, recursive process that requires an internal orchestration of planning, organizing, writing, editing, and revising to help students negotiate the complexity of the writing process. Each component of the writing process has to become overt and visible using modeling, guided practice, and planned opportunities for independent practice. Students may need more intensive and explicit instruction in any or all of these areas. Each of the IES recommendations reviewed will assist practitioners with helping students develop micro and macro level writing skills. For more information regarding tiered systems for writing, please visit Patton's MTSS initiative page and live binder for writing resources, team presentations, and best practices in writing curriculum, instruction, and assessment across the tiers. To access the live binders on the MTSS initiative page, click Access information on the right hand side where you see the list of live binders in orange. And when you get to the next page, click on the Writing Live Binder link and use the access key to view all MTSS writing resources. The references used to create this MTSS Quick Pick are listed here. Please access the full online documents for detailed information.
Thank you for participating in this quick pick entitled Evidence-Based Writing Practices.